Hello all, just wanted to give a quick update as to the uh, process that I had for registering my uh, kit car in California and hopefully uh, give a couple of tips that might help you if you're looking to do the same. So just a quick overview of the car. Um, as my previous video showed, it was a 07 Chevy Cobalt that I purchased as a vehicle and I junked out the original car so that I can use the parts and then ordered the kit through DF Goblin. A couple of things to note is the turning lights, headlights all have to be uh, DOT uh, stamped. The, uh, I do not have, even though I do have a windshield, I don't have wipers. Um, so they let me pass with that. You do need a working horn. So I got a button here. You also need to have working hazards. And I don't think you can see it on the dash, but they are on. One thing when you're doing your brake and light test is that, at least for the year of the vehicle, if it had a handbrake, it needs to be a functioning handbrake. And it needs to have no check engine lights and the brake light has to go off when you release the e-brake. For the emissions, the smog, uh, what happened is that they classified this as a doom buggy and in order to pass you need to have your uh, breather valve not vent to atmosphere you have to have it recirculating so just keep that in mind the documents that you will have to fill out the first one being uh, reg 5036 you'll need the identification number provided by the kit company uh, the ID of the frame You'll need to put in a statement of facts. Here I'm specifying where I got the engine and transmission and the process I took of junking out the car. You'll need to uh, put in an estimated value of the kit that you purchased, an estimated value of the vehicle you bought it for parts, <clears throat> and uh, the total value, including the labor if you're having someone else buy it. Again, um, you would need the identification of the kit and then the information of the purchase of the vehicle, where you got the engine, whether it's a crate engine or from a vehicle, and also the transmission, the frame, Again, being the kit and the body from the kit if the body is provided. And then your name and information. The next form that you need to fill out is the Reg 343. Again, you need to put in the uh, frame kit ID number. A license plate if there is one. Usually they will provide one when you register the car. Uh, the new owner, so yourself, uh, spouse, their driver's license, and then address. Here was the mileage of the engine when I took it apart. And then here, I purchased the vehicle uh, from a dealer. 
that's just what happened when I uh, got the original car. And then here, this is the out of state for taxes. The kit was not in the same state that I reside, so I had to pay taxes based on the value of um, of the purchase, usually provided through the company. <clears throat> Information of when you purchased and received your kit. And then again, lastly, your name and information. The next step that you would need to do would be to junk out the original car, uh, which the DMV will provide. And then you can trash any parts that you don't need for your kit. You should receive a certificate of origin from whatever company you purchase your kit, which will have the serial number, which is important for the two uh, forms that we filled out for the DMV prior. Then when you get your uh, temporary registration, the DMV will require you to pay uh, fees for um, uh, taxes, pretty straightforward. The next step that you will need to do is go to the CHP where they will do their visual and safety inspection. One thing to note is that the make is SP, C, and S and the year has to be all zeros. The CHP does not provide the year of the vehicle. The DMV will. So you'll have to sign, date, and then the rest will all be filled out by uh, CHP officers. Following that, or congruently at the same time, you would need to do a brake and light inspection, which can be done at uh, local mechanics, and they will provide two uh, separate certificates for the brake they need to check the weight of the vehicle and they will need to measure the diameter of the brakes to make sure that it can stop adequately. If the donor vehicle was originally equipped with uh, e-brakes and parking brakes, that system will have to remain intact and it will uh, also need the brake warning lights to uh, turn off whenever the e-brake is not applied. For the lighting, it all needs to be DOT approved and stamped. Uh, pretty easy to check, but important for uh, approval. And then lastly, after you have all those certificates, you will need to give that to the DMV, which they will uh, then send to Sacramento and supply you with a cert uh, certificate of sequence. And you will need to have this number in order to get an appointment with a smog ref. And in the process of doing the smog, uh, they will ask to identify it based off the year of the engine or the year of the body style. For most kits, you can use a doom buggy as your body style, and that will allow you to not have uh, EVAP systems or uh, cats and a lot of the emissions uh, that most cars have. Hope that all this helps in registering your kit car.